do all. men put themselves in a situation where they can avoid yeah. the kind of woman that's going to cheat on them? Here's the thing with men. They, this is a really key difference why I always say men get cheated on so much more than women do. They, with women, we enter relationships with the assumption the man is going to cheat at some stage, and then we're looking for evidence that he's not going to do it. So we go in with our, you know, with our red like alertness on. Most women, and I, I think there's an evolutionary reason for that because obviously we don't want to be left pregnant and all these things. So most women, when they meet a man, they'll start to check his online, when he's online, who he's following, and this, and then. Over time, they earn the trust and they're like, okay, I can relax. He's actually quite good. Like, I haven't seen any problems. Perfect. With men, they go into relationships with the assumption she would never. They go in with this naivety when they're dating that, why? No, no girl would. And it's, the other thing men do is because they've selected a woman, they want to justify their selection. So they assume she's a great girl. They assume she's a good girl simply because they've selected her, not because she's earned any of those values. So what happens is they ignore a lot of the behaviors that predict cheating. And the behaviors that predict cheating are so easy to see but they avoid those and they just focus on what they like because particularly if they're sexually satisfied they will literally avoid all the evidence so how they get cheated on is they go into it with a naivety now men who have been with lots of women will tell you that women are no more innocent than men are they've been on the receiving end when they've been in bed with a girl and she's called her boyfriend and said oh I'm just gonna be home but they've seen that side of women some men have never seen that side of women so they just think that doesn't exist so what happens is they go in with a little bit of naivety and they literally take words over behaviors as soon as a woman says oh no I don't do this oh, I'm, a, I'm a traditional woman they won't look at any, they will say well she's a traditional woman but she's been on a private jet recently or she's gone on holiday with and she didn't tell me who she's going with or you know she's always in the club and she doesn't tag me or any they don't connect the dots they simply go by what she says rather than what she does and I notice this particularly with men who have terrible relations with their fathers and just grow up in a single parent home. I always say men who grow up in a single parent home are far more likely to be cheated on. And the reason I believe that is when you grow up with just one parent, you have only one version of event. You only have a female perspective of the world. You kind of just think, okay, what mum says is almost true because you don't have a way of fact checking it. When you grow up with your mum and dad, you see that mum also, you know, she can be a bit annoying. Dad is difficult sometimes. You see the dynamic and you can fact check the truth and you validate what is being said. When men grow up with just a female perspective, they start to go into the real world believing everything a woman says and not double checking it. So when she, when she says, oh, my ex was so controlling, he used to always think I was cheating on him. He won't say, why did he think you were cheating on him? Did you do anything? They'll just think, oh my God, what, what, how he's so toxic. I'm going to prove I'm so much better than him and I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to let you do whatever you want. They just a adapt to her perspective. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is because they grew up not seeing what a wife looks like, not seeing that women, you know, they tend to come home when they're happy. They don't always go on holidays with their friends. They don't come home super late. They don't stay over really. Like, you know, when they're married, they kind of stay home with their, they want to come home to their husband. They didn't get to see that growing up. So when their woman is hyper independent, they don't see it as a, a signal that she's not attached. They just see it as this is how women come. And therefore, they select women who are usually more likely to cheat on them because she has those traits of a single woman that they don't notice. It don't, they don't notice. Mm. All right. How to avoid the cheetah. How to avoid the cheetah. <sighs> I'm going to go ahead and start with you. Uh, you want to go ahead, Sugar Curls? Okay. Um... I'm going, to, I'm going to say that if I'm going to just say this first, if a person decides to cheat on another person, then they're giving them a message that should be well received. I don't want you anymore. You're free to go. I think there's more things in relationships to worry about than to go in thinking about cheating. Uh, however, I do think that um, if a person decides to cheat, there's some qualities and values that they are not strong in, for instance, integrity greedy, um, selfishness, and it's not just a woman or man thing. Everybody, all sexes do it. Uh, it's just a matter of, okay, are you seeing the signs prior to getting serious with that person? Are you allowing that person in your life? You can't control anyone. A person can do everything right in a relationship, show their little signs. Later on down the line, they're, they cheat. That's a thing between them and their creator. Like that's an internal thing. You cannot control that. 
to me, there's so many other things to worry about relationships. Like I don't have time to be thinking about what is he, what is he doing? You know, all this stuff. So I don't know. It's not a good thing at all, but um, I don't know if there's a way to prevent it. You just got to look at the person's qualities, pray and hope for the best. You're always taking a risk going into a relationship anyway. So. All right. Go ahead, Jay. I mean, I think it's like asking how to not get into a car accident. You know what I mean? Like, I think the main thing she mentioned was behaviors, you know, so by driving on the highway, you know, you acknowledge the different behaviors of the drivers, which will better prepare you if an accident does. You know, you see somebody with their blinker on just shifting into the lane, you know, I need to slow up. You know, you're looking in your rear view to see if anybody's behind you speeding. You know, so you acquire, you know, a myriad of different behaviors that lead to accidents. So I think she she made a good point when she mentioned behaviors because you can't really take anybody at their word initially. You know, people present the best of themselves. Oh, I'm a great driver, you know, and then you in the passenger seat, like, you know, they can't drive with this shit. But um, pretty much you can prevent the chances, but you can't stop the behavior. You can't stop what a person is going to do. Like Sugar Curl said, that's between them and their maker. But if you're dating correctly, you observe that. You know what I mean? Like when you first start out with a person, you know, they may be in they may be out there socially dating and you see how they deal with other people and you just kind of take that into account. You know, you archive that information, because if you ever get to that point with that person, it's like what's going to separate you from those other people, you know, based on how they treated those other people, you can end up being one of those other people, depending on how they treated them. So if that treatment was good then you got something to look forward to. If you saw that they just, you know, took advantage of a lot of people and kind of left them in the dirt, then you kind of can make a summation of what that's going to be. So I would say definitely behavior is the main thing. All right, go ahead, brother. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I'm saying be friendly with them, you know, get them to drop their guard. Let them tell you everything. And then just archive that. Mm. Okay. All right, Hank, I'm going to you. How to avoid the cheater. Damn. Are we uh, looking at this from a man's perspective or a woman's perspective? I mean, uh, I mean, like it's up to you. If you want to be creative, I mean, you can. I mean, it'll serve <laughs> for the conversation. <laughs> I don't know if you want, you want to use those words. Want me to be creative? <laughs> hey, Jr., is that, is that you in that picture over your shoulder? You yeah. identify as both today, Hank. I didn't realize you could give a woman's perspective. Yeah, so. Thank you. Yeah, I, like see, I didn't hear you. Could you repeat yourself, ma'am? I saw what happened. You identify as both today. I didn't realize you could give a lady's perspective. Uh. Yeah, you, yeah, today's a good day for you. You must have had you a day last night. Got a man's cook. Yeah, yeah, he got he, Yeah, he gave you some dick last night. So now you coming at me real yeah, don't sideways. Worry about that, man. Over here. Don't don't you dare. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep it PG, y'all. Like a Sunday, y'all. Come on now. You're right. You're right. You must have got some eggplant last night, Lady T. Congratulations to you, ma'am, and all your endeavors. Uh, so let's talk about this. Uh, I not get cheated on. Well, as a man, I mean, uh, only thing you can do is probably try to make sure you pay attention to what's going on in the relationship. That, that, that's probably going to be the most important thing. Pay attention to the little things, uh, the mood swings, the uh, changing of attitudes, uh, maybe her work, her work schedule. Pay attention to all of those little things like that will probably definitely help you. Um, with with as far as a man doing what he needs to do to make sure he pays attention, uh, you know, be aware. You know, when, when she's ready to have a, a conversation, just listen to the words and, and the language she's using on how she's describing certain things. Uh, as it sounds, you know, like something more dire need or 
or is it just something she just rated, you know, some type of stuff. She just she's just pretty much venting and just getting off her chest. That's going to really help you in that situation. Um, Cause when, when you, most of the time when a woman has been feel like they're being attended to and, and you're paying attention and you're pretty much catering to them, uh, the chances of them going out is slim to none because right now they're, they're, they're emotionally and mentally, they're in a good place with you. So there's no, no desire to, to look for someone else as, as, a, as far as a male perspective or role model or, or some type of or mentor that she may be looking for in order to, uh, uh, unload her burdens, you know, as long as you're there for her to listen, pay attention, give her the, the, uh, emotional support that she's looking for desires, more likely you're good. Now it's not often where a man physically is not up to giving a, ple a woman pleasure, whatever a, a woman asks for. Now, of course she could have a high sex drive and, and the man is just overwhelmed. So what are you supposed to do? I mean, uh, hopefully you might have learned about that prior to getting married to the woman. Hopefully you tested the waters, you know, before you said I do. But if you didn't, and also happens you came up on it and then found out, I can't keep up. Oh, man. Well, Lord be with you. Uh, you, you have a different issue to deal with, and I'm going to leave it there. All right.